Okay, back with 15 and 50. Thanks to Netix Pro Gene and Renko for their support in doing these blogs. We're on the final stretch home. Um, today I'm covering a dairy topic and one that I really love covering is transition management in dairy cow. As I call it, a metabolic marathon that this cow has to, to go through around transition. And transition is kind of three or four weeks before calving to the five to six weeks after calving. Um, different people will, will talk about time frames, but it's basically what the cow has to do around now. I'm about to go on to a, a Zoom call on fertility in about half an hour, and I'm thinking about all the things that impact fertility that happen back here in cows. You know, and I think about what affects the cow back here that affects calving. And it really is that cyclical nature. But if you think about a pivotal moment in the year of the lactation cycle, transition is. And, you know, we talk about more higher yielding cows. Uh, this really comes very important when down to management uh, in our grass-based system. You know, still transition management is absolutely key. Um, and it really is make or breaking. And if you think about what I look towards and what I stand for now is really about happy, healthy cows, keep you in the system, profitable cows for farmers uh, and longevity for me is a key thing so if you have the genetics right keeping cows in the system and why would cows fall out of the system poor transition management poor setup for their lactation cycle this is ultimately the pre-season and then the game begins when milk production occurs and i'll talk about diseases a bit but so just fundamentally uh, there's three real areas that i look at with the cow and i look at negative energy which is energy balance in the cow i'll talk about that calcium absolutely important so vital and hopefully i'm going to come back to it on its own uh, before the end of 50 blogs in 50 days and minerals then as well but energy and protein inner negative energy balance the key thing to remember to understand with the cow is that as she comes up to calving she starts her fetus is growing she's starting producing colostrum so her demands are here and then she starts producing milk and this is where her me metabolism really shoots up and then depending on the qu quantities of milk that that cow is producing the more demand that's there now her intakes versus demands pre-calving is she should be putting on a little bit of condition because there's not a huge demand but there's a gap then develops between her intakes and her demands this is the negative energy this is where a cow milks off her back and um, when we see extremes of that fat uh, utilization and mobilization we get ketosis and i'll talk about that but this gap here um, is so important to understand that happens with every cow the more extreme that negative energy gap is and the longer it is the more potential issues we have her liver her immune system comes under such pressure and that is fundamentally key to understanding transition management we know it's there um, in some cows in higher yielding cows it's larger we have to work harder uh, but in every cow it occurs and we're trying to shorten that down and keep it as small as possible because that is why we look at disease in uh, in the first 30 days particularly of a cow's freshly calf cow's uh, cycle you know it's metritis womb infections how much impact will they have on fertility but that's totally driven by immunity immune function obviously calcium as well and um, but displaced stomachs again it can be a sign of poor intakes a cow under pressure and uh, milk fever is calcium but mastitis again is a is a balance between immunity and infection at all times so clinical mastitis if we have a drop in immune function, we need to be asking why. Um, any infections the cow can get from pneumonia, uh, sick cows around this time, you know, immunosuppression, which is there naturally. We're going to see, always going to see more disease in the first 30 days. But how can we minimize it down? We can do it by understanding that the cows need such, uh, we need such a plan here at this stage. And if I look at energy demands, there's different ways of measuring MEs. And I moved to UFLs. Um, and typically, just very quickly, uh, let's say if you're a mid-range cow, it's 6 UFLs and 0.4 UFLs per litre. So I can work out very pretty easily uh, what the demands of the cow is. But one of the things that I, you know, we can sometimes forget is that freshly calved cow's intakes are lower. So we should never underestimate that she needs time to build up her intakes. Particularly on grass, she'll take in about 12, 13 kilos of grass in her first weeks to two weeks, building up to her maximum intakes of dry matter. And um, so that's important to remember, she needs time to get going. And um, so it's really good when you're looking at diets, and a lot of your nutrition is gonna do this, is look at the intakes and the outputs and see where you are at key times of year. So if I look at the dry period length, Body condition score obviously is so important. If we can manage body condition, cows aren't getting too tame, 
cows aren't getting too fat because that will impact even uh, tin cows is quite obvious she's no reserves for this what, what that back fat on cows is doing is it's the reserve it's like the pet spare petrol in the engine just for that period where she needs it if she's too much fat on her body she's not going to be probably uh, her appetite is going to be poor she'll probably mobilize that quicker and if you have a rapid loss in fat that's again a risk for ketosis so tin cows and fat cows become a risk in the dry period so this is why we manage dry uh, body condition right throughout the period the dry cow diet energy balance protein is really important for the growing calf and as we come close up for colostrum production the quality of that protein and of course minerals and then calcium here to me is the most important mineral just remember calcium is involved in muscle function calcium is involved in immunity and the production of white cells which are so important for metritis infections think about calcium here for wound infections the wombs and muscle metritis every cow who calves is open and has bacteria in her womb we need white cells to fight that infection displaced stomachs the rumen uh, is in large uh, muscle if that muscle is weak and flabby the abomasum can slip out of place mill fever calcium direct measurement mastitis again so really important management so negative energy calcium looking at what impacts that in your dry cow diet looking at your dry cow diet uh, and getting it right but simple things like water space per cow if you think about space for a dry cow particularly in the close-up dry cows to lie down maximize lying times really important obviously hygiene has to be right but you maximize your lying times then when we look at heifers you think about heifers and the social hierarchies and behaviors and groups really important to get those management right those get heifers in the group right you know have you enough feed space heifers will always be the last up to feed space they'll be the ones most challenged in the system have they space to maneuver around look at feed space how easy is it for the cow to get to the barrier is the barrier pushing in her neck have you got that 0.6 meters per 600 for a 600 kilo cow for your dry period have you a little bit more for your freshly calved cow I'm not paying for the space, I know, but the space will pay for itself. If we can get cows, and remember, they feed together, they lie down together. We need to maximize a cube, a bed per cow as well, uh, if we're transitioning indoors. Now, in our Irish system, we'll typically we'll transition cows indoors, and then when they're freshly calved, we'll be looking to get them out to grass potentially, or being in by day and uh, in by in by night and out by day. Typical systems, but again, we must look at intakes. We must look at intakes across the group. And remember, within your 100 herd of cows, you might have some cows doing 35 litres, your heifers doing 24. Are we, are we making sure we're managing those high yielding cows in the system as well as the young cows? So getting this right, uh, and then you come into that calving time where uh, energy, or sorry, feed intakes for eight to 12 hours drop before calving time, getting her going again, so important. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to maximize maximize your dry matter intake so we can level this off as fast as we can so what will and that takes time but you know what will impact that again space feed has she available feed and um, so this is where we put in if we're looking at it in a grass-based system grass and then you know because she can only take in 12 to 13 kilos dry matter with freshly calves she needs to work up over the next couple of weeks to that 18 19 golden golden spot that magic number but concentrates again they have a lower volume we can feed them here they're, they're matching demands and you do that across the herd and then managing that freshly calved cows in the first 12 hours after she calves is she in pain has she got fluids is she under metabolic stress what can we do here things like fresh calver uh, do, these products are, are designed to get the cow going you know and managing calcium here is so important and i think i'm going to come back to calcium again um, and it's really just three three two to three four weeks before she calves down and looking to low calcium in the diet high magnesium really looking measuring decad so when her demand or demand for calcium is the same so she can flush it out of the bone but that freshly calf cow management in the first 12 hours is really key so what can we do on farm monitor monitor your bloods your nephes your bhbs and these are you know we've i started using handhelds many years ago human ones we adapted and i found them so useful fast quick for for um for just doing this transition care work we can send bloods to get them analyzed and should we do this as as a routine part of what we do simply you can look back now and you can look at your disease percentages see where you are for some of the key diseases i can go onto a farm and i can look at disease incidences and i can very quickly pinpoint okay this is potentially where we need to focus in on so this is just about really understanding that if we can get this right 
if we we get obsessed with the, what's in the feed but really get the environment for the cow right it's bed space lying space water feed space then look at the diet that has energy protein remember this is a transition particularly in grass based systems and any system where the cow is usually going from a dry cow diet to a freshly calved diet which is higher energy higher in protein that takes time to adapt so our whole system is going through a metabolic shift all the time while she's producing milk and more milk and the more milk she produces the harder this cow has to work and what we want to avoid is ketosis uh, and really look at you know cows milking off their back for the least amount of time we do will occasionally have cows where we'll need to treat them with the likes of propylene glycol but it's important to understand that we need to minimize this down but understand that this is the risk period and again i'm only covering it very briefly I mean, you could talk about this stuff and feed intakes, protein on its own for, for, for a long period of time, but it's to get people's attention to this is a place on your dairy farm where if you can ma optimize a lot of the behaviors and the biologies of the cow, along with good feeding management, good health management, good on calcium and minerals, you can really get the cow off to a super start to her lactation. She'll go back in calf, she'll stay in the system. That's my transition management, uh, the metabolic marathon. So my thought for today is repetition, practice. Uh, so I'm going to repeat myself again. This is so important in the dairy farm. If we want to get good at anything, we need to repeat and we need to practice and practice and practice. Some people will be naturally skilled at different things. But my experience, and I'm going to give you a lot of my experiences, uh, that uh, I'm, I was so bad at a lot of animal health areas like nutrition. And I just kept at them and at them, repeating, practicing and practicing and learning and learning until I got good at them. And repetition is a great skill to have. It requires patience. But today, my thought for today is repetition. So one last time, focus on transition management. Happy safe farming.